Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the uh, new Steven Slade uh, Infinity EQ. I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of how the GUI looks, where things are located at, um, how to use it, and some uh, best practices. So if you end up liking this video, uh, please hit the like button and also subscribe. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so uh, we're here in uh, Pro Tools here. So I'm going to showcase this EQ on a uh, piano track that's obviously part of a larger session. So I got the piano track here. Um, you can actually see that I've already used the uh, Infinity EQ on it to do the final mix. So we're going to actually put a brand new one on just so you can kind of see how it works from scratch. So let me add that in here. Okay. So this is the user interface. Let me blow it up here for you. So you can actually put this in full screen mode um, with this over here, but for some odd reason, my recorder doesn't see it in um, full screen mode. I have no idea why. So uh, moving on, um, let's start on the top left corner with um, the uh, preset section. So if you click on preset here, it's going to show you all the different available options that you have. So it's basically based upon genres and then it's also types. So uh, for type, you can see that mastering here and then it gives you also a couple genres within and then a couple um, milestones that you might be trying to hit like loudness. So um, why don't we take a look at uh, pop and see what that looks like. So this is an pop example here, and it might look kind of drastic, but if you actually look at um, the amount of um, dB changes being made, it's actually well less than three. And um, you'll hear a lot of people say that when you're mastering, if you have to make changes that are higher than three dB in either direction, you should probably go back and make some fixes in your mixes. So um, that's definitely true. Um, so if you need to ever go back, um, to your starting point, um, if you chose a preset, you actually can just go up here and hit the uh, undo button here. Um, that brings you back clean. You can also, um, if I put this back on here, let's do a loudness one here. Uh, you can actually just go up here and this is the reset all. So that it resets all your bands. Um, it doesn't actually clear this out here, but um, it doesn't really matter. Um, so a couple other sections up here, uh, you've got your AB section where you can compare um, two different EQs on a track. Um, that's pretty standard for several plugins, definitely Slate plugins. Um, this is where you can turn on and off the uh, Spectrum Analyzer. Um, you'll see this when I start playing um, some music, um, so we'll go over that at, uh, in a second. Um, and again, this is full screen mode here. This is your uh, meter section over here, so you can see how loud it is. Um, this is kind of cool. Um, this works as a bypass, basically turn it on and off. So when it's lit up white, of course it's on. Um, so it's as opposed to using this bypass button up here. Um, you also got your, uh, you can reverse your phase polarity down here, like most EQs. Um, this is um, kind of interesting here. You can actually change the balance from left to right and also from mid, uh, mid to side. Um, this is a mid side EQ also, which is great because not all EQs are. And mid-side is very beneficial for doing specific things, uh, which we'll go over um, in a second also. Um, down here, this is pretty much the last main option in the interface. This is bands only and global curve. What the global curve does is when you actually have an EQ in here, it kind of outlines it in a color. I've seen it done in blue and I've seen it done in white. <laughs> I think it actually does several different colors, but I uh, haven't played with this long enough to, to uh, see all what it does. So. Why don't we actually talk about um, using the EQ? So you can kind of see where I'm hovering over this here. You can see that's kind of creating a band. Uh, to actually create a band, you have to double click. So let me double click. So that made a band here. And then you can kind of move it you know, around, however. Now, if you hover over the little dot here, the band, uh, you have several options. You can uh, turn it on and off you know, with the power thing there. You can solo it with the headphones. Uh, you can uh, you know, shorten or widen your Q here. Um, you can lock the band, which is kind of beneficial. I've grabbed bands by accident many times and it sucks. Uh, so that's, that's a good little feature. Uh, this is where you actually go between stereo and mid-side mode. So if I click this, this is going to put me in mid-side mode. And you'll see here that if I shift this all the way over to M, 100%, 
turns to yellow and I'm in full mid side, or not in mid side mode, but I'm in full mid mode. So that means that any EQ that I'm doing now is only going to affect the um, frequencies within the center. Um, and if I shift this over to side here, this is only going to affect the uh, frequencies on the side. Now, which I think is kind of interesting is that you can actually go kind of percentages here. Um, I don't know if I'd ever use that, but it's kind of unique. Um, you know, I, I prefer to just EQ either mid or side separately. So let's just put this back in uh, stereo mode. Um, and then over here, this is your band type. So if I click this, this is kind of cool. You can kind of circle around here. It's almost like kind of like a, almost like Vegas mode. <laughs> but uh, you got your uh, low pass, you got your high pass. Uh, this is your high shelf. This is your just regular, I guess you call notch band. And this is your um, low shelf here. So um, typically you'll see as I move around on here that if I actually go up here, you can see it's gonna give you more typical options for you out on the spectrum here. So this here again is a uh, high shelf. And then um, down here will be a low shelf. And they see kind of creates a high pass filter there and a low pass filter like that if you go below. So it's almost kind of like predicting, not predicting, but so much, but basically telling you what you would probably want to put there. And that's more for people that are new to EQ, kind of helps them out. So kind of cool. Uh, so let's see what else here. Again, you can uh, shorten your bands like that. So I think, uh, why don't we actually uh, listen to this EQ? So what I'll do is I put this little short little piano part on a loop here and I'll just do a uh, quick EQ for you to kind of see what I do and you kind of see how it works. So let me actually reset the bands first and uh, all right, here we go. All right, so that's just a, a quick little EQ that I did on this piano, and I did it with uh, several different um, types of bands, just so you can kind of see how they all work. So basically down here, I did a, um, a mid-side, and I did the middle. So I was trying to focus the low in a little bit. As you can see, this piano was a um, virtual instrument, so I didn't actually really have a lot of low end here on it, but you can see that it's, you know, fundamental frequency right here was, um, hitting at the beginning of the chord progression each time and uh, i want to kind of just emphasize that low end a bit i wanted to focus it so i did it on the mid side um eq uh here um this is kind of what makes the piano sound honky uh it kind of makes it sound like it's um the difference between a quality piano and an amateur piano um, so I pulled out this frequency here and you can kind of see that it's definitely peaking here and if you listen to when i solo it it's a uh, it's pretty nasty frequency for this particular recording. So I uh, pulled that out. I actually pulled it out quite a bit. It, uh, you know, don't, don't be afraid to make some drastic EQ um, adjustments like this. This is about negative seven uh, dB reduction here. Um, you know, it, you need it sometimes. Um, and then up here, 
what I did was I did a mid side up here also, but I focused on the side and I tried to bring a little bit of air into the piano. Uh, this piano actually kind of cuts off almost around 5K, which is um, quite low. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, I can't remember records if we're going for more little lo fi piano sound. I think we might have been so, but I still want a little bit more air in it. And this is going to focus more kind of in this area right here, obviously, since we don't have much up here. Um, so yeah, so this is basically the Slate Infinity EQ. So the question is, does the Steven Slate Infinity EQ get the audio source or stamp of approval? And the answer is yes. It's a fantastic plugin. Um, it's very simple to use. It has very modern-like features. You pretty much just slap it on there and you can get started with it right away. Um, when working with digital EQs, you want something that's going to be um, well, easy to use and quick. Um, we're not looking for coloration from them. We're looking to make like pristine edits. Um, and if you saw some of the uh, presets in there, I think one of them did actually, you could do like plateaus. Like I've, I've never really seen EQs make that sharp of um, edges on it. So that, that's kind of cool. And then also you saw the mid side, you can actually go increments in between mid and side when you're editing. I've also never seen that um, on an EQ before. So, I mean, it's pretty neat. Um, it does everything I need to do. It's now my go-to digital EQ. So um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And uh, if you like what I'm uh, teaching on here, like what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button. Um, so, yep, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.